We want to give a big shout out to our friends at Stryker for sponsoring this video. I just visited their global headquarters in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and wow, this leading medical manufacturer has state-of-the-art workplaces, provides top pay, and even has a housing stipend for their interns. Learn more about how Stryker supports their employees who are in first by going to careers.stryker.com forward slash first. In the 25th spot, might have been a little bit of a preview there. Oops. This team, 18-16. From... Oh, just quick. <laughs> from Anita, Minnesota and Adina High School. It's the Green Machine. They have an overall record of 14-1. and one. They were the winners this past weekend at the Lake Superior Regional. So your 2019 Detroit Championship Chairman's Award winners came right back out swinging this year with their performance this past weekend. An 8-1 and one record um, with a 2.44 ranking score average. Took the number one seed and they would go on to win six matches. They are a tall bot. Um, they shoot six and autonomous. Um and they really like to take their shots there from the end of the trench run. So uh, they have another regional later this year at the Minnesota North Star. Um, Tyler, not really to put you on the spot, but do you yeah. have any thoughts of Green Machine just in general or I mean, specific to this year? You know, it's it's funny just looking at the past how much Green Machine, you know, has started to grow with their robot because they've always been known as a chairman's team. But until, you know, this year and last year, they had a pretty good bot too. Not really much in that set. I remember like thinking way back, like 2012, they made this like tank tread bot that literally would have to do like a 12 point turn just to move anywhere. <laughs> uh, so to see them coming from there to where they are now uh, and the robots doing, you know, really well. Uh, and shooting well, is it the best robot out there? No, absolutely not. But it's a, a you know the, the at this event it was very dominant, the Lake Superior Regional, and it's just great to see uh, uh, 1816 continue to do well. Shout out to Matt Midtag, who's a former alumni with me uh, when I was on 93. I know who's a mentor on there as well too. Uh, and of course, uh, Yoji and everybody else who helps uh, contribute on that great team. Good deal, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, 1816 was in our 25th spot. Justin's going to tell us about. Our 24th ranked team is going to be 74-98. One of my favorite, favorite teams. From Auckland, New Zealand, it's Wingus and Dingus, 17-0, undefeated winners of the Kidding Pacific Regional. So I don't know if you guys followed them during their VEX days. They were a VEX phenomenon. They were uh, always competing for a uh, world championship in VEX. Now they've turned into FRC winners from New Zealand. 74-98 is off to as uh, hot a start as you can get to in 2020 going undefeated. They were the number one team, one ranked team after 11 matches at the Canadian Pacific Regional and had an incredible nine RP advantage over the next highest team. So <laughs> well into the uh, day on Saturday, they had the number one seed pretty well locked up. Uh, they might have had, I don't know if you guys have caught any matches, they have made... They must have one of the most skilled drivers in FRC. Uh, they have a short robot that flies under the trench. And when I say flies, they are flying under the <laughs> trench. And there is not a lot of room for air. Uh, as a team with a low bot, it is not always easy <laughs> to get your robot underneath that trench. And that Strike robot first. just freaking flies. It's unreal. Um, but their, their climb isn't uh, that pretty, but it's effective. And it just uh, really rounds out a great scoring machine from 74-98. Wingus and Dingus. Yeah, I feel like there um, was the rookie season last year or the year before, um, and they had, yeah, equally. Yeah, I feel like that was a, a cookie cutter of what their robot, Justin, just – Last killed. year rookies, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just flying all over. So, uh, very cool. All right, moving along. Uh, next up, Christine's going to tell us about 2451. <laughs> oh, no. I think that was a first. It's not me no, this I... time. Nailed it. <laughs> Let's go. I managed to get I, this I, far I though without that. it really happening. So what's the command? Oh, oh, you you got it before you got it before me. Never. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. <laughs> From St. Charles, Illinois, um, and. I believe it's a community team now. Uh, it's Ponich, and they had an overall record of 9-3. and three. They were quarterfinalists at the Midwest Regional and took home the Gracious Professionalism Award, sponsored by Johnson & Johnson. And they took home the Woody Flowers Finalist Award, which is huge. So congratulations to them. Um, so they did have an early exit, but it seemed like they had a pretty like decent start to their season. Um, I know, Tyler, you said you watched decent amount of their matches do you have anything yeah. you want to 
Say uh, it well, Juana, I just want to say that in order to have me tell you that you were muted, I muted myself and then forgot to unmute myself as well. So this is uh, <laughs> this is working out great. So <laughs> yeah, so I was at the Midwest. I was at the Midwest Regional on Saturday uh, until until uh, Alliance selections. Uh, for those who don't know, I have a three month year old, so uh, we don't say that we we just get <laughs> in and out. Old. Yeah, we get in and out at events pretty quickly nowadays. So, uh, but she's but she's pretty awesome. So, uh, but yeah, so so I was really surprised actually to see Ponage out in the quarters. Uh, you know, especially when they picked up, or, or sorry, they got uh, paired up with. Uh, oh man, I'm missing my thing here. Uh, but looking at there, I think they were part of the number three seed alliance off the top of my head. But mm-hmm. the the alliance selection there was a scorched earth, and it was quite interesting because you had so you had Argos 1756 uh, who didn't seed in the top eight. And a, and the team that did seed top eight, they weren't bad. Uh, they've actually been in seeding positions before. However, the, were they the best team there? No. Um, it was Ironclad, I believe. And so, I'm sorry, two three three was number two seed. So the way that this draft went down is that you had five eight four seven, essentially a scorch, uh, twenty four fifty one. All right, I keep confusing what we're talking about. Uh, but scorching twenty four fifty one, uh, scorching one eleven. I don't remember if they scorched seventeen thirty two or not. Uh, but pretty much they did it to where they needed. 2338 not the pair up with 1756 that was the plan um so you look at that round the way it went 2451 comes in and picks up 930 uh who is world finalist from last year however 930 uh a, a good team no doubt but had some issues in quals 2451 i thought looked pretty good in quals from what i saw but had some issues going into the playoff rounds, uh, just not getting the accuracy down they were looking for uh, as well, too. I, I have to admit, I'm a little surprised to see them in the top 25. I know they're 24, uh, so I probably would have put them, uh, you know, a little bit further back than that. But, I mean, not a bad team by any means. Uh, mm-hmm. Looking at the matches that they had, I mean, from a consistency, what I saw in Qualls, was different than what happened in Elim. So I wonder if they just had some bad, hit, bad hiccups and maybe they improve uh, at their next regional as well too. Uh, so I think there's still good potential uh, from 2451. And their next regional is going to be at Seven Rivers in Wisconsin uh, mm-hmm. in week six, uh, which is going to be actually a pretty competitive event. I'm looking forward to that as well. So good luck to them. Congrats on 24. Not trying to take that away from you. Or 23. Not trying to take that away from you. Uh, but uh, looking for more out of And I'm sure they're looking for more out of themselves at their next event as well. Yeah, definitely. All right, Man, I was so, all over the place there. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> all right, so heading into the 22nd spot, we have 13.25. Oh, now is Mike muted? No, Mike's muted. Man, we're, we are hot today, guys. <laughs> we're doing so well. Sorry, guys. So well. <laughs> Oh, boy. All right, here we go. From Mississauga, <laughs> Ontario, Canada, it's Inverse Paradox. They have an overall record of 15-4, and, and they were the winners this past weekend at the Georgian College District event. Um, so no stranger to the top 25 these past years. Inverse Paradox returns um, after their win um, in Ontario, um, while most of the eyes were at the Humber event. So 13-25 finished 9-3 and three, uh, with an even 2.0 ranking score average. They would be selected as the number one alliance and win in seven matches after a three-match uh, quarterfinals. Um, like I said earlier, no, this was one of the matches that weren't up on the Blue Alliance. I can't speak to the robot um, too much this go-around, uh, but really have loved seeing their steady presence of 13-25 uh, these past few years in Ontario. Um, yes, there's always those like two, three, four teams you kind of always mention Ontario, but 13-25 is really up there with their consistency with the amount of times that we talk about them year in and year out. So congratulations to them. They do have another event. Um, at York uh, later this year, and then they'll be at the provincial championships after that. So, uh, congratulations uh, for, um, as, for their win this year, and uh, good luck going forward. Uh, so that was inverse paradox, and then in our twenty-first spot, we have Team Thirteen Thirty-Nine. Justin's going to tell us about. From Denver, Colorado, East High School, it's Angel Botics, thirteen and three overall. We're the finalists at the Utah Regional. So somebody can correct me. I think this is a newcomer to the top 25. I don't remember um, Angel Botics on the list. Um, yeah, I think so. But most of their matches begin with a really consistent three-ball auto. Uh, the intake use in tele-up allows them to pick up balls nearly at full speed. It's one of those things that maybe seemingly uh, maybe a little bit 
underutilized by some teams. Some teams, you know, I kind of mind included, have to slow down a little bit to pick up the ball. Uh, 13 through 9 really can pick it up at full speed, which is super advantageous for them. Their climb is done through two arms, give a nice, uh, give nice stability, nice wide grip on the bar, and they've done uh, quite a few really easy double balances. So um, the robot is just nice and stout, uh, steady, workmanlike, um, and really gets the job done. So congrats to Angel Botics, and you can catch them again at the Colorado Regional next week. <clears throat> Welcome to the top 25. That's awesome. Angel Botics. Let's uh, take a short break and thank our friends over at Stryker uh, for really supporting us. Stryker has done so much uh, to help fun stay loud, live, and independent. And you think, hmm, fun sold out. They can't be loud, live, and independent anymore. Not true. Uh, we, really what it comes down to is that Stryker has said, hey, you know what? We love first. You guys love first. And we just want to bring some people on board, pay them a ton of money, and support them being in first. How does that sound? And you know what? We've have vetted quite a few sponsors before. We haven't taken really any on board to this uh, magnitude that we had before, and we're very happy we have because Striker has really come through uh, in, in being big for us and being big for first and just supporting uh, so much in the first community. So go check out. They have a Striker's Careers blog, or you can check them out at careers.strykr.com uh, to learn uh, so much more about what's going on, so many positions and jobs. Uh, if you watched Infimidation, we were uh, trying to find me a marketing job uh over there and there was like 60 of them available just in michigan and then like another 100 available worldwide so uh so i might be looking soon who knows hopefully my boss isn't watching right now uh so with that said uh go check out uh careers.strykr.com uh if you want to learn uh, about more about striker and their just gorgeous facilities uh that they have all the way around the world and how they will support you being first love them so much thanks a lot striker uh for allowing us to just you know do crazy ad lib ads as well too because they're, they're just chill with everything we do, and we love them for that. Thanks a lot, Striker. All right, we're going to move along here to the 20th ranked team, and that's Team 1410. From Denver, Colorado, and George Washington High School, it's the Kraken. They have an overall record of 15-1, and one, and they were the winners of the Utah Regional. So uh, this win this past weekend extends the original win streak to three years. They would go 9-1 and one after qualifications with a 2.5 ranking super average. It would go on to win six, uh, to go on and win in six matches. Five out of those six playoff matches were above 185 points. Um, we will see this alliance in clips of the week. That's a little bit kind of a spoiler, but with the help of 1410, which is a hall, which is a tall bot, um, we consistently score power cells in the inner port, uh, especially in auto. So it's a really cool clip that'll be in clips of the week. So so for you guys to see it if you haven't already. So nice work to them, uh, an awesome robot, and uh, good luck later this season at. Um, at the Colorado Regional, where they'll be returning to the home state. So congratulations to the Kraken. All right, so in our 19th spot, we have Team 4201. From El Segundo, California, it's the Vitruvian Bot, 17-0 undefeated winners of the Los Angeles Regional. So of the robots I've had this uh, week, this is the first tall bot, and boy, it really increases their ability to hit inner goal shots. Uh, they're in, they also have an extremely high velocity, which helps draw a very straight line between their shooter and their scoring objective. Uh, they drive over the rendezvous zone with ease, which is certainly a requirement if you're not going to go through the trench. Um, it really doesn't look like it slows them up or trips them up at all. Uh, I mentioned a few times, uh, tall bots really made climbing easy on themselves. Um, it's not nearly as uh, tall of a reach as if you're a trench bot, and 4201 uses their climber to great effect uh, with many, many successful double climbs. Uh, they teamed up with 987 and Team 6000 in the elimination rounds to take the event win again undefeated. So if you didn't get a chance to check out this great tall bot, which I think has SpaceX as a sponsor, which I'm really jealous of, <laughs> you can catch them again at OCR uh, Week 6. So that's the Vitruvian bots. I, I actually agree with Chad. I, I think I probably would have put them a little bit higher on there. I don't necessarily yeah. think they make the top mm-hmm. 10, uh, but yeah, I would have put very, them a few spots. Good. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I know some people be like, oh, well, they, you know, they were the Alliance captain and they picked 987 or whatever. Eh, that doesn't necessarily mean you're better just uh, you know, that way. They're a great team. Please don't get me wrong with that. But uh, And I probably put them maybe, maybe at about like uh, 12 is kind of where I think yeah. I put them at. Yeah, definitely. But mm-hmm. Elo says 19. We actually have a lot match up this week. I thought it was strange. It's always kind of weird when that happens. For sure. All right, we're moving along here. In the 18th spot, we have Team 2168. From Groton, Connecticut, and Robert E. Fish High School, it's the Aluminum Falcons. And they were winners of the Southeast Mass District, and they went 17-1 and and were winners of the District Chairman's Award. So, per usual, yeah, they had a pretty solid start to their season. It's 
pretty characteristic for them to come out really strong at their uh, like first two events because they have been signing up for more and more events every year. Um, and this year they hopped into their first event dominating in a pretty thinned out pool, I would say, of capable shooters. So their consistent autonomous and accurate shooting really kept them in first place without any you know, reason to kind of keep an eye on who's behind them uh, all weekend. They ended up um, seeding first, and they picked up host team 88 and 3958 to join their alliance. Um, and they really just kind of steamrolled and took it in. I think it. I think they only went to two for each round. But, I mean, they looked really solid the entire event, which is kind of uncharacteristic. Usually they kind of break or dip down, but they were pretty solid. Um, they're supposed to be competing this weekend up in Ontario, um, and then again in district week four at WPI if it's not canceled. So yeah. hopefully they'll be able to play again soon because they looked really good. Um, and they won their first chairman's award this weekend at Southeast Mass and got the fling bling. So congratulations to them. Hopefully mm-hmm. we can see more of them this season. Uh, 2168 is if you want, we used to talk about snubs of the week, even though they made the top 25, this is a top, this is a top five team right here. Uh, 18 is way too low for this team. In my opinion, uh, I, I don't know why, why if the voting was just low for them or what, but 2168 is on fire this year. And, uh, they've been doing obviously quite consistent the last few years. So, uh, with that, I'm especially surprised not to see them. Usually those two combos get you up a bit higher. Uh, being you know being good and being known tends to help with something like that, right? Yeah. Uh, so you know th- this team, you know, hopefully we just keep seeing more and more out of them if they're able to play. Uh, but you know they're playing at uh, they're playing at Carleton University next week, is it? I think yeah. Um, yeah. So I mean, if, one are they able to go to Canada and come back? Hopefully, I know there's a couple. I don't know. A couple <laughs> doing that as well too. Know. So well, yeah. Make sure you watch uh, watch that event as well too, and watch. Uh, how good this team really is uh, and seeing them play was pretty uh, spectacular this weekend. Yep. And they're going to be heading up there with um, their like buddy team, mechanical advantage. And yeah, that's right. That team definitely played a big part in their success this year, I think in winning chairman's for the first time. Cause I guess they had submitted before, but this was like their first real, I think. Hold on. Robert like, 2168 in chat says that they won't be there. Sad times. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm guessing he's on 2168. Yeah, I would assume that most school <laughs> districts are like just even uh, community teams like we're sad. not well, like I just can't oh, imagine that people mm. are able to leave the country and then go back to school even if yeah. they're on like a like Wait, a community hold on. team. We so. won't be there maybe. What is that crap? You can't be posting uh, stuff like that and putting maybe eh, whatever. Ban in chat, whatever. As I said before, just <laughs> until we get official word, yep. nobody stress out. All right, so moving on to number 17, Mike, can you tell us about Team 4911? Yeah, from Seattle, Washington and Kings High School, it's the Cyber Knights. They have an overall record of 33-3, and three, and they were the winners of the this past weekend at West Valley District event. So coming off a fresh win week one at Glacier Peak, they continued right where they left off and picked up another number one seed, this time going 10-2. Um, and two. Uh, they have a multi-ball um, autonomous, which is um, really paired nicely with their um, swerve drive and just a really awesome robot they have. And they have a really great climbing system to finish out the match. So um, as we all know, PNW is um, canceled from this from this point on, or postponed or canceled or mm-hmm. uh, whatever. Uh, <clears throat> but two district wins, you know, ain't too shabby for 49-11. I just really feel bad for them that they have such a great machine. And then they, you know, just have to in, stop indefinitely. So, um, congratulations to four nine eleven. Um, sounds like we won't be talking about you anymore. Um, this top twenty five um, this year, which is a real shame. But uh, congratulations and a really great job um, this season. So it makes me feel bad. Man. So forty nine eleven. If you look at the last couple of years, um, has done quite well at championships. Uh, and I think in some cases, some people, you know, obviously the, the meme with who, but you know, when I think what, two years ago, they were like a number were the number one seed. I'm trying to remember off the time. They were a high seed. And I think people were like, Oh, I'm going to scorch all that stuff like that. Look how far this team has come. You know, obviously, you know, they, they went far being where they went in playoffs and stuff. But I think the perception was not there for that team. Now the perception is there. Watch this swerve. watch how accurate, watch how swift this robot truly is. And, you know, they paired up with Jack in about twice now. I'm actually surprised to see them at 17 because I think they were quite a bit higher last week. Uh, so I'm not sure if P&W just took a hit this week or, or what happened with that. But, uh, I mean, Cyber Knights are, are just looking absolutely spectacular and uh, making you really think about 
now a second Cyber Knights team much more frequent than what you would have oh. before. Yeah. Look at that. Nice part. All right. So, All right, so oh, yeah, I think I'm going to go back to back. Yeah. That's we right. had a little mess up with that stuff, so. Do it. Do it. So we're going to 16, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is also coincidentally happens to be 1684. Let's see. So from Lapeer, Michigan, it's the Chimera. It's an overall record of 12 and 7. Uh, they were the winners of the Kettering number 2 event. So finishing 17th with a 1.16 ranking score average and a 6 and 6 record, um, the Chimera showed everyone that they had what it took as they were taken number 1 overall. Uh, it, they took semifinals of three matches, but they would win in the finals decisively in two. But, man, they really do look good. They have a swerve drive with a, a dual-sided intake. They just spin and spin and spin and spin move around their opponents to death <laughs> to get to defender. Uh, they are a low bot, uh, and even with swerve, they do power through the middle of the field as well. Um, so they're just an awesome little bot. Well done to the Chimeras. Uh, and, and a big congrats in order because they would take home the Engineering Inspiration Award as well from this event. So the gold silver cling bling um, to 1684. Um, so congratulations to them and good luck in, um, at Lansing next weekend. And then they'll be at the Alpina number two event after that. So uh, Chimeras is looking really good. I love watching their robot. It just um, with Sword Drive just opens up so many more opportunities. <laughs> the spin here, you. Mike, you're and, talking about is crazy. <laughs> yeah, right there. Just look look yeah, at this as they come right through. Like, and I believe they're yeah, look at, they just spin move to death. You can't just like I think they're in clips of the week too. I think we'll see that's them, awesome. So. Uh yeah. yeah. So Chimeras, the only thing I, I really want to see improvement from them for is their intake. Uh I noticed there there were a few times that they would go to intake power cells and they just pop out uh right away and we wouldn't get fully into their uh their indexer on there. So really to me, I think that's their that's their key improvement to look at is just making sure they can get that acquisition down. Uh, really quick because this team uh, looks really awesome. You know, shout out to Steve, who's a uh, host in our uh, our Fim Infimidation show uh, for having a, a great start to this uh, 2020 season. Yeah, yeah, for real. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and Tier 2 Plus subscribers on Twitch, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.